The new ST17 deck features Don Quixote, Don Flamingo, it has a lot of reprinted cards, some new cards, and it even has a new leader alternate art. So this is going to be my deck featuring a package with the seven warlords of the sea so let's go ahead and get started hey guys welcome back to another episode if you guys enjoy please like subscribe and there's more links down below if you want to see all of the deck lists we're going to be going over the utilities the events the 2ks the blockers and of course the attackers so let's go ahead and get started with the leader itself and if you guys are interested i go ahead and uh I translate these, I print these out, and make my own proxies. If you're interested, there's a link in the description so you guys can make your own. I have a full tutorial. Anyway, let's get started. So, Don Quixote, Do Flamingo, 5, 5, and he says, uh, The Seven Warlords of the Sea, Don Quixote Pirates. When you have two Dawn and then you attack, you reveal one card from the top of your deck. If that card is a Seven Warlords, oh, I messed that up. Of the C-type character with a cost of four or less, you may play that card rested. So obviously, this leader is pretty decent. He was never like crazy meta, but he was always on the cusp of it. And I feel like with a lot of these new cards, as well as some more previous stuff, especially from the OP07 set, it makes this leader more consistent and a lot more fun to use. So let's go ahead and talk about the attackers as we talk about the strategy. So there's a decent amount in here, and we're gonna talk about this one starting first. This is a new New one from the ST17 set. So this is a Trafalgar Law, Trafalgar Law, Seven Warlords, Hard Pirates, Four, Five, One. On play, you may return one of your characters to its owner's hand as a cost. Then, if your leader is Seven Warlords, return up to a one four cost lower to a character's hand. So you can use this to bounce back some of your utility cards, you know, like your Kayas, your Buggies, your Sengoku's, in order to get the effect off. And because it is a four cost or lower, you can get it out with the leader ability. You can get it out with the gym bays that you can kick out as well as bring back as well from the Gecko Moria. You're going to see almost every single card in this deck actually being able to be kicked out and kicked out with the leader ability. So this one's a really good card. I highly recommend it because it not only does it help you uh, with board presence, but you bring a card back to your hand that you need and you get to clear something. So this is a very good card and there's a reason why it's a new SR. So yeah, running four of these laws. Next up, we have some crocodiles also from st17 another new card this is a four five one anything four lower kicked out so really important on play reveal the top card of your deck if it's seven warlords you draw two then place one to the top of your deck so this is really good for setting up to use your leader ability but more importantly it gives you hand advantage there are so many seven warlord cards in this deck that you're more often than not even if you don't set up the deck on the top deck yourself you're definitely going to be able to get some value out of this so we're running four of these Next up, it's the Gecko Moria from ST03. This is a staple in Seven Warlords decks. 451 on play. Add one Seven Warlords or Thriller Bark that costs four or less other than Gecko from your trash to your hand. So once you play this, you get more hand value. You either grab some cards to play for future turns or you get some 2Ks that you want to use later. So as you can see here, everything so far has been four costs or lower, which is amazing. All right, next up we have Jimbei, also another staple if you're going to be using seven warlords. So four, five, one, on play, return up to one, seven warlords, other than, I mean, play up to one from your hand. So this combos so many things out. You absolutely need this. Such a good card. Really, really good. And then for your late game cards, because this is more of like a mid-range deck where you're going to be playing nothing but fours to, you know, swarm the board, use as counters to defeat the opponents. But if you end up getting quote unquote late game, this one will help you. However, this one will not be able to be kicked out by this. So there you go. Boa Hancock, 680 counter on play. Choose up to one of your opponent's characters. It cannot attack until the end of their next turn. Then place up to one or less cost character to the bottom of its owner's deck. So the second effect is like whatever. You don't really need to do anything with that. But this one is really good because it allows you to really freeze any character. Doesn't matter what cost it is. Doesn't matter if it's rested or not. So this is a really good card to help you in a late game win the game. So there you go. These are your attackers. Next, we're going to go on to our blockers. Now, this is uh, probably a little bit of an interesting tech pick but I thought I would get rid of the three drop Don Quixote blockers because that, that one's really good if you don't remember it's the uh, three three it's, it's a yeah three three one 
with blocker and on play where you uh, rearrange the top five that was really good for this guy's ability and if you're running like the nine kicker sanji's out however there are way too there's way so many seven warlords in this deck and there's lots of ways to manipulate the top of your deck that I felt like we needed some more defense. We don't really need that Don Quixote three, three counter. So instead, I wanted this one just so we have a chance of getting some more triggers. And besides, I miss using this boa. So STO3. We're running three of these. Next, we're going to be using another ST new 17 card. This is great. We're already using three of the ones that were shown. So this is a 4-6-0 counter as blocker on play. Look at the top three cards of your deck and place them in any order to the top or bottom of your deck. Once again, this thing kind of replaces the other Don Quixote. So why not actually have some, uh, you know, some room for triggers? Then give up to one of your seven warlords of the C-type characters or characters one rest at dawn. So remember... Your leader actually needs some Dawn on them to attack, so this really helps out when doing so. It, it enables you to almost use your leader ability when you play this, so it's, it's amazing. And who doesn't love a six power defense? So we are running four of these, so seven blockers, three of which are running the um, triggers. And it is a four cost, so yeah, almost every single card except for the six drop boa so far has been able to be used with the leader ability. So once again, even if you don't set it up, there's a really good chance. I think we're running 38, 38 cards that you can actually kick out. Now for the 2Ks, and there's a lot in this deck for a good reason. This deck is really counter heavy. So we have another new ST17 card. This is the Buggy 7 Warlords, Buggy's Delivery, 1-2-2. Two, two. On play, look at the top three and reorder. So effectively, you can use this and you're kind of replacing Perona in the deck. Perona is okay, however, it's only a 1K counter. It's not searchable by anything. And this thing... Is a 2k so this is an amazing card to fit in this deck and this is a this is a really good target to bounce back with your other law card the one that uh let's see this one here yeah you may you may return to one so you play this and you're like oh i just wasted my 2k no no you can, you can bounce it back no problem so that's why you're running these so we're running four of these are really good then a bunch of other staple 2Ks. We have this Dracul Mihawk. Usually it's going to be a 2K, but if you do get it on the field via an effect, your leader ability or whatever, it's going to be fine. One Dawn on him, draw two, then discard two. There isn't that many quote-unquote dead cards in this deck. Um, I think there's about eight cards that are that have no counter that don't do anything in your deck. So this is like whatever. So we're only running two of these. Next up, we have these crocodiles from OPO7. A lot of support from that set I mentioned. 452 on play, rest one dawn to return up to one two or lower character back to your hand. Now, obviously, you want to use this on the opponent, especially if they're doing like really quick rushes. But this is another one besides the other law I talked about where you can actually use this to bounce some of your cards back. So it, it does cost one, but hey, honestly, it's really important to get 2Ks back in your hand after you use their ability. So yeah, even though it is a cost, hey, if you're not going to use that Dawn for anything, it's really good to use this to get it back. So we're running four of these. Then we're going to run two of these Trafalgar Laws from OP07. Uh, four, four, two, so not the greatest attack, but he, he can if you want. However, the activate main, you may return this character to its owner's hand as a cost. If your opponent has six or more cards, they place one to the bottom of the deck. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, so, yes, this is another one that's, you know, everything here can be kicked out. It's really good. But, yeah, the new addition here is actually this buggy, which has so much utility here. Now we're going to move on to the events of this deck. We have one copy of this Perfume Femur. This is seven Warlords. So this is a two cost main up to one of your seven Warlords gets two. So it's a really bad upgrade there. But what's most important is your opponent cannot activate blocker. So you kind of want to use this as like a finishing move, which is why you have one. And the trigger isn't bad for drawing one card. Now we're running three of these, oops, this goes over here. We're running three of these Gravity Blade Raging Tigers. Uh, seven cost main up to two of your characters with the cost six or less on the bottom of the deck in any order. So this is amazing for board control. If you're getting outswarmed for some reason, or if they have like two, five cost, two, six cost, this is such good value. Because honestly, even if you're at 10, your leader only needs three Dawn total to do this. Uh, which is amazing. I forgot to add that little uh, one cost there, but that's it. Uh, but yes, there you go. So yeah, yeah. Don't don't forget. I gotta redo this, but it's two dawn, one attacking, and then you pay for one dawn. So there you go. 
So yeah, this is so good. And the uh, trigger is amazing too. Uh, place up to one five or less to the bottom of its owner's stick. So a little bit of control, but a, and a finishing move off. Okay, now for the utility. So we're gonna be running these Senkokus all the way from OPO7 as well. One, two, one, and it's another really good bounce back, bounce back target for you. Uh, on play, look at the top five, grab one, seven Warlords type. So, all, so honestly, every single one of your uh, basic cards are good. You can also grab this Perfume Femur if you want, so that works. And then you place the mating to the bottom of your deck in any order. Unfortunately, this is not like, you know, this does not do anything if you kick it out for anything like that. It's just whatever, right? But these are really good searching for for the exact ones you want. And honestly, there are really good targets. There's so many situations where you want a specific Warlord. This is going to help out with that. Now for the final card of the deck. We're running three of these Marshall D Teaches, another card from ST17. I'm running a couple of these as a tech choice specific for this leader, and we'll see how they work when I do a lot more duels. But here it is, two, three, one, activate made once per turn. Place one card from your hand to the top of your deck. So it's a hefty cost. However, you attach up to two Arrested Dons to one of your leaders or characters, which is pretty freaking good. Uh, so basically, you're able to set up on the first turn that you can play this out, which you know, and that you can attack and use the leader, leader ability. If you go second, you place this out, you're good for the next turn. If you go first, and then on your second turn, you have three Dawn, you play this for two, you activate his ability to set up the top of your deck, you place those two rested Dawn on your leader, then you attack, then you rest that other Dawn to activate the ability. It's the perfect second turn. So whether or not you're going first or second, this card is going to get some value. And it's also searchable by a lot of stuff. It doesn't have a lot of attack, but honestly, it's just there, and your opponent might want to raise, you might might want to use resources to get rid of it. The only bad thing about it is you're not gaining too much value. You're just cheating out a card from the top of your deck. But you know, it's it's it is what it is. We're just trying it out. So that is the deck that I'm gonna be running for a little bit using this new ST17 version. This one says OPL1, but you know you know what it is. So I'm gonna redo the uh, the deck here. I did this really fast, but you can see here I messed up the war warlords, and I need to add in the one cost there. But anyway, I like the art; it looks cool, and I really like this deck. So let me know down below what you guys think about this. We went for more mid-game swarm with no late game. I did try running a deck with like Sanji's at the end and some Don Quixote, Don Flamingos, and some other stuff, and I, you know, it was okay. But then I found out, hey, why don't I just swarm a little bit more defense? And yeah, because we have a lot of top deck manipulation. I wanted to get rid of a lot of it already, so we switched out the Peronas, we got rid of the three drop trophies, and hopefully these trigger boas will come in handy. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, and let me know what leaders you want to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.